really know what's going on over there other than everybody's dumb. The instant you step out of line, you say something that they don't like and they don't like you personally, they're going to use all those pre-existing laws and they're going to use it on you. A woman exposed her male genitalia to women and underage girls. That's what happened. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's, super, it's super cringe. Report.com. You may remember me from such Tatum reports as Eric Butler, who is Tatum, <laughs> and other reports such as who is Eric Butler of TatumReport.com. We're not sick anymore, Eric. I don't think, are we? No, I I, I feel great. Um, still a little hot, but it's not bad. It's a Fourth of July weekend. I know you guys have a was it Canada Day? Yes, okay. we had that on Friday. It's oh, hard to Friday. say. I realized the other day, Canada Day. Canada Day. Yeah, that's uh, already that, demonetized, by the way. We've uh, just official word. We are demonetized on YouTube. For what? For we didn't, we, is it the word? Um, possibly. But uh, I thought that was a good thing in democratic America, as we will see by our story from California. It's supposed to be well, a good thing. If they're trans, right? Regular prostitutes, no. Trans prostitutes, yes. Well, we will get into it, but it is an it is a law that would stop prostitution, like the intention of prostitution. Hello, chat. Hello, getter. Hello, Twitter. And hello, streaming platforms such as Spotify. And Twitch. whatever the other Show love is. to the Twitch, the Twitch viewers. The Twitch. The two Twitch viewers of all time. We should just start adding a controller in our hand. I got a Pac-Man over here. Let me try to show that. Let me show me playing with the knob of Pac-Man. There you go. You see the Give pack the, right here. Give the Twitch but viewers uh, some, you know. That's what they came here meat. for. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll get our cleavage going. How have you been? <laughs> oh, you know, uh, no, no complaints, really. Um, I am. Uh, here's what I'm going to complain about, actually, is mm -hmm. I am getting like dozens of emails from Donald Trump every day. And between... <laughs> Between Trump and Trump Jr., I'm getting so many emails from a hat I bought in 2019 or something at mm -hmm. Trump Tower, um, and they just have not let up. So I guess good job on the hustle. But you guys, I mean, we're talking I'm not even exaggerating, bro, like multiples every single day. So that's my complaint. I thought you were going to complain about YouTube. Well, OK, <laughs> <laughs> I do have that complaint, too, and I think it's because I'm also have my email open right here that that is what was first to mind. But yes, I do have a bone to pick with YouTube about, you know, it took me a month to realize the reason I'm not able to stream on my channel is because of a strike from a video that they took down in April, even though the video was posted in January of last year. So it's an mm -hmm, absolute mess. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I do also have a bone to pick with Instagram for demonetizing How my accounts. Um, for a lizard people meme, which that's true, at least and now as silly as that is, oh, a lizard people meme about sudden adult death syndrome. Fine, whatever. At least they <laughs> told me they told me that was the reason they demonetized the account. But I never understood the first strike, so to speak. They never told me for weeks. They sent me just a real you now you've got me triggered, but they sent me messages for months about you can monetize the account Tr sign up here and i always thought it was a scam that they were going to give me less than a penny per thousand views or something so i didn't do it then one of my buddies told me he was like oh yeah I'm, you know i'm making x amount of dollars per month on instagram reels so i decided to do it and then it worked for a little bit and they sent me several messages saying that my account was in danger of being demonetized but they never said why they just said, you're you're on thin ice, basically. Your account could de be demonetized. For weeks, it was like that. They didn't say exactly what it was. And then the lizard people meme happened, and they said, oh, this meme is false information. Taking and it too far. Yeah, you're done. So the, the lizard people saw, at, a, at a dinner party is what did it for me. I saw Will Witt share the lizard people uh, meme, so wondering if he's uh, his have, have his account exploded soon, or maybe he's too big to fail, as they say. They don't want to pick a 
fight with him yet over lizard memes. Um, the first thing on the on the docket today um, is the Bodega guy. I think he's called New York City being fired. Now it's a very interesting story. He's not fired for his. Well, let's show the video first here, and we'll tell everybody. Tell me if you can't hear it. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that you can. Um, right on here, and there we go. Is Loading. he going to load? Loading. Of course. All right, let's just go ahead and reload. The old refresh move. Timeless. Tested, yeah. Okay, so I just moved to New York, <laughs> and I'm trying to go grocery shopping. Oh, Holy we shit. almost had at what it. Point did, uh, at what point did Twitter video take so long? Like, why? For, it's not even. It's not even a minute long. Okay, yeah, so I just moved to New York, and I'm trying to go grocery shopping. Wow. Impressive, Twitter. Truly impressive. I think I have the video downloaded. We'll try that way. You really we'll don't want us it. to watch this. I, which no, you would they think don't. They would, they would want us to show this, though, right? Like, I mean, this bigot has Okay, so I just moved to New York, shopping. and I'm trying to go grocery shopping, and so I type in, like, grocery stores on my Apple Maps, and, like, every fucking one I go to, like, I'm walking, too. Like, they're like this shit. Or, like, fucking... Like this, like, bro, that's not, not a grocery store. Like, I'm trying to get like eggs, yogurt, like cheese, like shit, like that, right? Like, look at this place. Hey, yo, Ak, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. The Aki way. <laughs> like, you know, those TikToks. It's like, I'm I'm fucking doing it. Like I've literally been to like five of those now, and like I don't know what the fuck I'm about to do for dinner. Like where are the Krogers and like the Whole Foods at? Oh my god! Like I'm god. about to eat fucking like like cereal and ramen for dinner. Like what the fuck? Where are the Krogers and the Whole Foods at? Sadder words and like I was on the this guy's side a bit before I saw this, and he's like, whoa, like. I'm in the middle of a downtown core and I can't find a grocery store. Like you're going to convenience stores. Like, well, yeah, that's not going to be the same as a grocery store. Well, uh, why'd you move to New York city? Uh, well, first of all, Walmart at times square. I don't think there's no Walmarts in New York. Um, for first, I don't think he's in a downtown center. He's in like the South Bronx. I, I, I believe. Um, Isn't it all downtown, all of New York? <laughs> Uh, not when you're everywhere else. Not when you're in the Bronx, bro. Like the the okay. Bronx is uh, is a different beast. It's like it's Yankee Stadium, and then uh, the rest is like a shooting gallery of gang territory, sort of, <laughs> sort of, sort of. Okay, um, I think it is getting a quote unquote gentrified, as they say, a little bit. Um, but what's funny here to me, first of all, and this is probably pretty nitpicky, is that um, as bad as this sounds. Use Google Maps. Don't use Apple Maps. That's your first problem. Secondly, these are things that you need to. Now, I'm. I'll, let me just. First, I don't want to bury the lead here. There's no reason this guy should have been fired. <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. It's absolutely insane. And he's. He's. I think he's from Michigan, so he's not understanding the bodega lifestyle just yet. Um, and a, of course, you do not want to buy your groceries at a bodega. I've literally seen Brooklyn bodegas with like heads of lettuce in the store. That if you move them you see like a big brown spot they've been sitting there for weeks um but the bodega does take a little bit of getting used to right like you can go order a bacon egg and cheese you can get a chopped cheese that's probably what he should get for dinner is what a chopped is a cheese chopped cheese a chopped cheese yeah what the fuck is that <laughs> oh uh, a chopped cheese is like how i describe it is uh if a a Philly cheesesteak and a cheeseburger mm -hmm. had a baby. So they have like this ground beef and then they put some cheese on it and then chop it all together and you can get whatever, you know, onions. Uh, what garlic. type of bun is it on? It's on a, you can either get it on a, a hero or a roll, which I think are pretty <laughs> New York specific as well. So the roll is more like yeah. a, you know, a, a six or eight inch sub type of thing. And then a roll, okay. of course, is just a little little round thing. Um, so he's, he's struggling. It's his first couple of weeks in New York. So he doesn't know what's going on. 
Um, but I don't want to, and you know me, you know, I love the bodega bacon, egg and cheese, and I don't really tolerate that sort of slander. However, this guy being fired is absolutely insane. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like he just got there. I don't know why he chose to live. Well, he probably chose to live in the Bronx because it's the most affordable, maybe outside of Staten Island. But, um, it, it, it's, it's awkward because on the one hand, yeah, you don't like, dude, Go to go to Trader Joe's. I'm sure there's a Trader Joe's up there or go to just a stop and shop or something and use Google Maps. Don't ask Apple. Apple's. I mean, look, Mm -hmm. I get it. We don't want Google running our life. But when it comes to the maps, I just personally think it's better. So that's part of your problem. And you just got to explore, bro. Go talk to your coworkers. Go talk to some neighbors. Figure it out. You you don't you can't just be like, oh, why why are all these? Yeah, there's bodegas on every corner. So when it's snowing. (laughs) When it's when it's snowing in New York, you don't have to commute all the way to a grocery store. You can get something real quick. You could go get a you know a bacon, egg, and cheese, or or sandwich or something. So I guess to your point is um, how you, you might you may have switched sides on this guy, and I can see both sides of it. Like it's annoying that he can't find a grocery store, and he's he's learning what a food desert is because everything is. I'm sure it's <laughs> going to be tied to. Of course, he's a racist. But also the Bronx is racist because it is a food desert. So that's kind of a catch-22, right? A rock and a hard place, as it were. Um, and yeah, bro, I don't I don't think you should be a really don't don't go on social media begging for a Whole Foods because they're out there. You gotta get your you gotta get on the train and you can go find a Whole Foods. It's not that hard to do. So don't go on social media pretending like, whoa, all these, oh, everything on my map says this says is a grocery <laughs> store, bro you you that is your fault you were an adult you can figure it out but you also should not have been fired for complaining about the neighborhood that's what i think and you ask siri about this she's probably going to send you just you know here are some bipoc owned businesses in your area first and foremost but eric i don't know um did you read the article bro because they claim he got fired not for these videos but because he before he moved there, he posted his job letter mm. uh, for his business, or for he which is outreach, like a sales business of some kind. So he, I guess, he posted his. Excuse me, so much water. He posted his job, his employment letter that he got before he moved out there, and that's what they're claiming they fired him for. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. I read the article. I clicked on his TikTok. Unfortunately, I don't have TikTok on anything, so it was in the browser version whole lot of shirtless vids like the thumbnails are him shirtless so i can't get down with that um it is tiktok i guess so i can't entirely say that he's not a, a douchey guy who's been you know if it wasn't this he would have got fired for something else but it sounds like a convenient excuse but they say that they found that he posted his employment letter when he first started when they were went looking for this video so it's his own fault like you can't really do that i don't think you can post contracts online like that without the other person's permission i don't know but they said they have a policy where you can't leak or share internal information like that he probably had an nda and he probably broke it by posting that i don't know why you would need to post it um without just like showing like just the part that says you've been accepted i don't know Uh, but but he's a tiktok so he needs the attention but he it seems like i i just i'll be honest i just skimmed over the article um, so wow. I didn't, I didn't catch that. De- <laughs> I didn't catch that detail, but does that timing really add up? I mean, how, how much longer, how long ago did he post the, the contract versus him? Well, yeah, they the said video- it's, they, they found it when they, the video came to the, the bodega video came to their attention. So they probably scoured his stuff and found it. Okay. So to me, that still sounds like, yeah, I guess you can say you got rid of him because he posted the contract. They found a reason. Yeah. But yeah, they, they found a reason, which is, uh, which is, I think it's kind of sad. Now, maybe it was stupid. I, I'll admit it's stupid to post that personal stuff on there that could get you in trouble. But to me, it kind of seems like they don't want the backlash from him. I mean, was, was was the video racist? I don't think the video was racist. No, and a lot of the comments were attempting to be that. Like, how is not agreeing with the content of a store, like the product of a store, a racist thing? Like, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of Italian guys who work at these places. And maybe I'm wrong. And like I said, 
or, or maybe it's the Ock thing, like, oh, Ock, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. Maybe that was racist. I, I don't mm. know. But I can testify from experience that I have seen tainted, expired food and produce at a bodega. So I'm not here to harp on him for that. Like, bro, I remember it so, like it, disti- very distinctly in a snowstorm when I first got to Brooklyn in like 2016 or something years ago. Um, and I just, I don't know why I just, for whatever reason, I picked up a head of lettuce and it was literally brown <laughs> on the other side. You know, it's in like one of those little plastic things. And I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, you guys got to get this out of here. Like it's done. Like somebody needs to get this out of here. So, uh, I'm not harping on his complaining about the quality of food at a bodega. I'm sure a lot of stuff is expired in there. I think, and this is only hearsay. This is just me making perhaps some assumptions, but I think even some of these guys will buy stuff from criminal elements. So that's of why course. you'll see, you'll There's see always stolen <laughs> food trucks and stuff. Yeah. So, um, all that said, There's- if he, if he was truly fired for posting the content, that's fine. Or not the content, but the, the contract, that's fine. But it still begs the question, like they were just looking for a reason to get rid of this guy. And I think he's got a, not even a GoFundMe because he's white. So he's got to do Gibson go or whatever the alternative is now, <laughs> because him just his, his TikTok alone makes him ineligible for a GoFundMe. They might as well make <laughs> GoFundMe just for BIPOC now. Like, like if oh, you're, they should, they should, you know, and, and by the way, um, I think after I made a, a reel yesterday about the NBA, um, it, it dawned on me again that maybe I actually should start a change petition. It was a joke at first. And now I'm like, I mean, they're free to start. So maybe I should just start one and see if anybody signs it. And I could be in the NBA this time next about year. About what? Oh, for you to be in the NBA? Yeah. Well, because they're, they're discriminating. I mean, look, these guys are six, <laughs> seven, bro. Are we all, we can't yeah. all be six, seven. Like that's true. Lower, th- lower that a little bit. Let's get some. Why uh, don't you go for the WNBA? Eric, there is a, I'm pretty sure there's a Phoenix WNBA team. Is there not? Oh, there, dude, there is. And they, well, I was going to say, you got to try out. You got to get Tatum <laughs> report to, to send a camera one, at least one camera with you to a tryout. And these lesbians are going to hate you. <laughs> um, and but they can't. You just say I identify as woman, Erica. Yes. Easy. And I'm trying out. Even yes. if you don't make it, they have to let you try out. There's no way they they can't let. If there's an open tryout that exists, there's no way they can stop you. I guarantee it. And if they don't, then that's an even bigger story. That's right. Why can't I? Yeah. Um, and I was going to say that they love the I think it's Phoenix Mercury. Uh, you know, not the Phoenix Suns, but the Phoenix Mercury. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, yeah, they love them, but nobody loves them. Nobody, nobody goes to see those games. But when you go to downtown Phoenix, they literally have streets named after WNBA players. So they are really forcing it. They, <laughs> they want you to like it, but nobody likes it. Nobody's watching it. And um, I think, I think Literally. actually Brittany, I think Brittany Griner plays for the Phoenix team. Or well, she did. She's in, <laughs> captured in Russia right now. Yeah, you know, yes. Brittany Griner. Um, they're even promoted up here. Like they get desperate up here, and it's like the NBA has a deal where they have to promote them. Even though I'm playing, uh, I play tons of NBA 2K right now, and um, you leave it on, like you don't play it for a bit. The demo goes right. It, it shows an, a <laughs> WNBA game, like the demo. I'm not even kidding. Um. <laughs> no, I was going to talk about the convenience stores with the with the stolen stuff that happens here all the time. Maybe you go to a convenience store and you see a Mountain Dew that's not available in Canada. You know, it's probably falling off a back of a truck or a different type of chip like a hostess because Canada is very big into Lay's because they're made here. Um, mm. You know, you see a product you've never seen before, like a blue drink of some kind. I'm getting and uh, it's probably been stolen. I'm getting a message here from the streaming platform about my question earlier about why the videos suck and don't have time to answer that. Sorry right now, Gregory. <laughs> no, I don't know if that was even his name. Um, well, thanks for getting see, back to you, though. So it's, quick. Yeah, the, see, I told you they're fast. They're good. Shout out Restream.io. There's my ad. Cut it, clip it, and then get emails about how bigoted we are. Um, so this bill in California that just happened, or they just uh, repealed it, essentially. Signs bill to repeal anti-loitering prostitution law that trans activists says leads to 
bias. So they're, they're it's so stupid. From 1995, it prohibits loitering in public places with the intent intent to commit prostitution. Now, of course, there's going to be an argument there, Eric, that how can you prove that there's intent to be to commit prostitution? Like that's at the discretion of the officer. But I think probably when a bill like this happens, it's because they know these people are hookers and there's not anything they can do about it. And they just stand there and, you know, like, you know who the prostitute is and you can't do anything about it. I'm sure there's an argument against it, but on the surface, I'm going to say it seems reasonable. But what they're saying is it profiles trans, black and Latino women, of course. <laughs> and my, my and they're saying it walking well trans is is the uh, they of course they have to have a catchy phrase like don't say gay yep complaints of discrimination walking while trans what this tells me is that trans people dress like prostitutes if you think either they are prostitutes in disproportionate numbers or just the trans people on it surface why are they dressing like prostitutes in an area known for prostitution if they aren't prostitutes <laughs> i guess you can and, and it goes on to say of course everyone no matter uh is that Anthony Weiner, tell me it's not, or is it a different Weiner, the guy in oh, California? Oh, Scott. His name's Scott. Scott Weiner, excuse yeah. me, right? Anthony, uh, what was That's his a nickname? Different guy. Uh, what was Anthony Weiner's? Uh, Carlos I, Danger. I don't know. I don't remember his nickname, but that's. I mean, they're Carlos both. Carlos Danger is what he went by. Awful people. Everyone, no matter their race, gender, or how they make a living, deserves to feel safe on the streets. So even if you're a prostitute, you shouldn't be arrested, is what he's saying. Because they, they, this is what they do. They play the word games. They say um, being arrested is making you feel unsafe, just like they say in schools and everything. It's unsafe to have a police presence. And I get it. Like the, the police, like after all this COVID stuff, they're not, uh, I'm not f- fangirling for them with the giant phone finger either. But to say that uh, you're unsafe because the cops are trying to arrest prostitutes who are, cl- are obviously going to be there all the time. And you should be able to prostitute in the streets illegally. <laughs> Or else you're unsafe. That's a ridiculous statement. Like even in Vegas, in Nevada, where they have brothels and stuff, Eric is made famous like by Lamar Odom having a heart attack in one or whatever. <laughs> um, they still don't allow it in the streets. You see it on cops all the time. If you're in, from 1998 and you watch cops, that they don't allow just hookers to walk around because it's bad for business. It's bad for people's business. People don't want to see hookers around. They don't want to see pimps around. They don't want to see the people who are buying hookers around. So they come up with laws like this to make it easier to prevent that. And also these women are probably being trafficked in a place like California. And it's just, you know, and the drugs make- and the drugs too. like, do we really can think never that forget all, the drugs? All the prostitutes are just sitting there sober as a judge all night. No, there, That's right. there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, of drugs that come along Jackson with would be proud. And, of, um, uh, the they, yes, go ahead. Well, uh, judge uh, reference. Of, of course, California continues to cater to criminals, right? Like mm-hmm. you can steal up to $950. Uh, Gavin Newsom recently, apologized for saying the word gang when he was talking about crime in LA and he was like, Oh, well I didn't. (laughs) Um, but on top of that, what's even more not surprising. It's not surprising at all is the, uh, the soft left wing bigotry that they assume that most of these people are black Latino or trans. Like, so what they're telling you is that, yeah, uh, most of the prostitutes in the area are are Mm -hmm. black brown or of course trans because there's a huge which uh there is a market for everything especially in san francisco so i'm sure they do have a market for uh the transgender prostitutes but they're telling you that um yeah we know that um it's the same thing that you see with weed right like oh yeah uh in new york like we have to make these laws because we don't want any white people getting into the legal weed game because all of the black people have been it's like, dude, you're you're basically telling people that we know that these people are criminals and we're going to let that slide because of their race and or gender. But also gender doesn't is not real anymore unless we're talking about abortion. I mean, it's just so confusing. These people twist themselves up into pretzels. They do these crazy <laughs> mental gymnastics, all trying to, I guess, uh, I don't I don't even know why. I mean, it's not like in California they're fighting against all the right wingers. It's like, dude, it's a deep blue state with this single party yeah. rule. 
So I don't know who you guys are fighting against. And we saw a similar thing in well, my favorite, Eric Adams, uh, posted a picture on his Instagram of him wearing a mask at a doctor's office. And he's like, we're fighting. We're going to keep fighting for abortion. It's like, who, who are you fighting, bro? You guys you guys are aborting kids until they hit kindergarten. Kathy Hochul is not going to do anything. Like, who 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 are you fighting? You, you've literally become a, a destination for abortion. So I don't know who you're fighting against. Like, you guys can do whatever you want. But I, I digress. I'm getting off track a little bit here. The point is... Um, they are telling you that they believe that women of color or people of color or they thems of color are prostitutes and we're not going to arrest them because that would be racist. And it's, it's really quite sad that people even still buy into this. Well, you make a very good point about who runs the place. And the assumption that they're trying to make is that of course, non-white people are discriminately and unfairly targeted by police and therefore even in the realm of prostitution there is unfair policing against these people but of course there's no statistics required there's no assessment of what race the cop is which is always a huge thing in these things uh for places like baltimore and st louis and chicago same in new york too new york, even in new york yeah where there's tons of black cops and hispanic especially in uh, California, there's lots of, you know, Hispanic cops too, but this is never brought up. And then as you say, people who are in charge, who are, you know, leftist Democrats installed by leftist and Democrats and California, which is a place, you know, where obviously they can push this stuff through and, and easily get repeal a bill like this because it's completely controlled. I think they call it a super majority by Democrats, but that doesn't matter. So like, and it's the same thing. Whose streeters were I watching the other day? Um, it was somebody's. It might have been. A, a, I don't think it was Elad. It was. Hold on. Give me exactly five seconds to think of who that was. Um, it was somebody with Alex Stein. There was this big chubby guy with going around shirtless with Alex Stein at a pride parade. And they mentioned that, uh, you know, Joe Biden's in charge. The Democrats of the House and the Senate. How come they're they're not doing? It, they're not changing anything so like you're complaining that obviously it's this like right wing to authoritarian government somehow and it's it's conservative politics that lead to discrimination against people who otherwise would be living a very pros prosperous license life in prostitution <laughs> but yet all the people that you supposedly agree with are in office you even stopped the repeal of gavin newsom but he's still there and everything's still going wrong for you somehow. How does it work? If California votes liberal for everything and it's super liberal, but it still doesn't work, what does that say? I mean, you can't admit that what what it says. Yeah. And uh, it, it happens in the famous one where that uh, guy died in police custody in Baltimore and they talk about how, I remember he was put in the van and he, and he hurt his neck, I believe, because they threw him in there and he slid around. And, uh, they, of course, they blame racism. And whether it was wrongful death or not, the point is is it's a black police force with a black police chief and a black um, mayor. And the governor is a Democrat, I think, of Maryland, but I'm not sure. And then you've got uh, who's the black congressman who who lives in that place that's rat infested or he, that's the place that he uh, is in charge of, you know. And that's where um, Kimberly Klasick came into play, where that guy... Uh, govern that place and scott pressler went up there and cleaned stuff and they got mad at him for cleaning up garbage in the neighborhood so it's all that sort of stuff like it goes right to the top and we even know like 2022 politics we pretty much know who all players in the game are from governor congressman senator all the way down to police chief just like we're seeing in the uh the texas shooting uh portion where the police uh officers on the city council are stepping down we know all the players because of the internet but we still are just blaming this vague ideology. It'd be like living in like rural Alabama, which I'm going to assume is is a Republican and is being like, you know what? If we didn't have so many of these uh, white racist Republicans, uh, then we wouldn't like be, we'd be prospering. And it's like, well, this is your own design. This is like a uh, being a sports fan. I'll use if you're a Phoenix Mercury fan <laughs> and you're a player on the team and you're complaining that you suck even though your favorite coach 
is the one coaching you and the person you recommended as GM is running the team and you're still like, this sucks. It's not our fault. It's like, what, what the hell's wrong with you? Like you're just in denial at that point, but I digress well, Eric. There's go ahead. No, it's the brainwashing. They've been, I mean, they've been told over and over and over again that it's always the right wing. It's always a rep- Republican or whatever. And look, we both know that Republicans are gar- like, they're all swarmy <laughs> little, you know, politicians, but, but on the left, they will continue. Like, you that's how that's how bad it's gotten that's how deep it is that as you can see like i mean yeah you you said it like we know who's in charge but the people in charge will still point the finger outward even though they have this crazy majority but they've just been so heavily manipulated to the point where they can't they can't they can't put two and two together they don't realize it um uh, this is a, like a sad story i was talking to my dad who is, he's completely unhinged. He doesn't, he, he, he screams like, dude, he's like a, he's like a, a stereotypical left wing crying meme. Like he just starts talking about Tucker Carlson. I'm like, dude, I, you're just, t- does he watch you? him? No, he watches the regular mainstream media and he gets his talking points from them. So he, all he knows is that Tucker Carlson is evil. So if I say that, uh, I think Joe Biden might have something to do with the gas prices. He says, you learned that from Tucker Carlson and literally uh, will, will literally scream about it. It's like, dude, calm down. Like it, it, we can, we can, we can see the reality around us. He wants to talk and I get it. He's much older than me. So, you know, if he experienced some real racism, but even that, that is almost even more my point. It's like, you can, you can compare what you might've experienced as a 10 year old kid versus what we're dealing with now and you don't see you don't see any difference at all you think that everything's the same and and the last thing here just to your point about the cops uh in my experience and this is obviously not going to go for everybody but in my time in brooklyn when we dealt with the fireworks and we were dealing with the uh basically what i I mean i'm not a detective but i'm pretty sure it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that the certain area of the neighborhood I was living in had turned into like a gang territory war. I mean, there were memorials all over the place. Every day you could Google Regent Place, Ocean Avenue, Flatbush Avenue, and you would see a shooting. It was pretty clear. You could see the junkies. You you could see the crackheads. Like somebody was fighting over territory there. And every time I saw a cop, it was always a black or Hispanic cop in four or five. Well, I lived in Bed-Stuy, then I lived in Flatbush. But I never saw a big, scary a uh, stereotypical white cop with a mustache talking about come here boy it was always it was always and a black spinning guy spinning revolvers on y- his yeah, fingers yeah <laughs> yeah and and i even just really quickly here i spoke with and nobody a lot of people i shouldn't say nobody but a lot of people are never going to understand the fireworks that we dealt with in the summer this time mm. in 2020 i mean just you can pull up the new york times article my block was the cover photo it was absolute terrorism and i would see some cops walking down the road and i'd be like guys what are we doing about these fireworks? They knew exactly what I was talking about. And they agreed with me. They were like, de Blasio told us not to do anything. And the fireworks are so prevalent that as soon as we stop somebody, then the the kids, you know, three blocks down are going to start letting them off. And nobody wanted to take even a second to think about how did uh, this, this fairly, you know, modest neighborhood, this is not Fifth Avenue, this modest neighborhood come across enough money to buy thousands, if not more, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fireworks to last them weeks at a time. So I said all that to say, in my experience, even the cops in New York, at least in Flatbush, in my part of Brooklyn, were POC, as they say. So I don't know. (laughs) The the brainwashing, bro, they just can't can't get through it. I think you should force your dad to watch an episode of Tucker Carlson. It's only an hour long. Maybe he'll see something. Dude, he would would cry. He would literally cry, bro. Well, that's like... I can watch Sports Center and see golf highlights, but if they really wanted to, the golf Sports Center could tell me that one golfer sucks, and I would have no idea. If they showed me over like the course of, like three years that, uh, let's go with the name Brooks Kepka, if they only showed me his misses for three years, then I would think that he sucks because I don't pay attention to golf. But I have a vague understanding of golf, and I could name like twenty golfers. I did this the other day. Me and my friend just started naming golfers, and neither of us watch golf, just all from highlights embedded in us in our from our lifetime. And you could do that with politics, just because you've been around for a long time doesn't know that you actually know what's going on. 
you know what the TV tells you if you're not actually paying attention. Uh, you, If you don't play football, you might know a lot from watching it and even a hell of a lot, but you might not know like certain formations. Or you might not know certain lingo. You could watch a thousand military movies and there's still stuff I guarantee you that you wouldn't know about being in the military or stupid vernacular that people use that because it just doesn't it just doesn't come up when somebody's just showing it to you and, um and this just, is a stupid uh, post well, really, really quickly <laughs> no just really quickly mm-hmm. the thing about um about my dad there and here's how i know that he's so he's just i mean his hills are dug in he's 70 years old or whatever it is there's no it's it's not going to change it it's, it's impossible and here's how i can i can concretely say that is when i ask him i say hey so what is a what what is a good step that you think I should take because I'm being I'm being brainwashed by Tucker Carlson? I don't even have cable, bro. Like I see Tucker on Instagram and YouTube, whatever. Uh, I, I think he's a decent guy, but he's not the only person I get my news from. So I ask him, if you think that Tucker Carlson is so bad and he's the only reason why I don't agree with you on everything, then what do you suggest I do? Like what is an actionable step I can take to, to see the light cl- clearly? And he told me, and, and he, he said this is so angrily that... The, the way to do it is to watch ABC, NBC, CNN. I'm not even joking, bro. He, his solution is to watch more television. And that's how you know he's so deep in there because his brain has been turned to mush by mainstream media. So he thinks it's happening ev- to everybody, but it's just not. It's like, don't, you can't tell me that I need to watch more TV and that's going to be the solution. But does he to watch think ABC? that those are all different points of view? Like, does he think that they're not just like, he all thinks the major they're different networks from go from left well, they are, but they're all still like the same narrative. It's not like he's saying like, go watch the Young Turks and CNN. Like those are going to be two very different. Or um, who's that guy? Uh, the older guy, I forget his name. Or or even saying Jimmy Dore. Or yeah, exactly. Very good. Go watch Jimmy Dore or something. He's a different type of left wing. Or go watch this and that. He's just saying go watch different versions of the same thing. Yeah. Oh, but also MSNBC is an extra sprinkle of crazy. Yeah. So but, like it's it's like he thinks that he knows that he's being presented with all these different points of view but I'd like him to name somebody on like Newsmax or name no, name he, a conservative commentator that isn't just told told to you about by these channels because of their influence. Exactly. You know what I mean? And um he thinks he's under the impression that because that's the majority. So I don't know. I, I can't testify to how different he actually thinks they are. I'm under the impression that you are correct. And he thinks that they are all giving these, you know, uh, nuanced opinions about everything. And it's all different. And it's not completely controlled by I don't know, a couple people. But he genuinely thinks that because it is the majority, it can't be wrong. Like he uh, just the stereotypical version of what you would think of a sheep is like, well, everybody says it, so it can't be wrong. And it's like, dude, you're so deep into this bubble. You haven't left Oakland, mm-hmm. California in decades. So you have no idea what's going on. Like I drove across the country a number of times and I can see that these same people, you can say that they're the majority. That's totally fine. You got everybody, all the, the alphabet networks versus Fox news, which ob- I mean, nobody's perfect. Nobody in this world, but obviously Fox has their problem. Do I think they're a little bit more truthful than ABC? I do. Um, but that's that's what it is. It's like, well, basically, he thinks that this is the majority, so it can't possibly mm-hmm. be wrong. And that's 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 the the brain. Well, you have that's a lifetime the- of telling you, and you can name anything. All those networks plus Hollywood plus the late night talk shows plus social media. They do tell you, and they do make it seem as though this is the point of view. And everybody who deviates from that, well, that. It's just the crazy crowd. Yep. And they, they literally, and I had to explain this to somebody I went to college with a couple of years after. And I was like, there's literally ha- another half of the world out there. And they basically pretend that there isn't. They pretend that there's 1% of people out there. And those are the people that disagree with the mainstream mer- narrative. And they're so out of touch and crazy that they're not, not worth watching. I like to think back to one time where Trump was talking about the fire bombings in Sweden. This is while he was in office. And um, John Oliver says, we reached out to the Swedish government and this is what they said. We have no idea what he's talking about. Well, case closed. <laughs> Unnamed person from Swedish government has no idea what you're talking about. As like, And that's as far as it goes. It's like, oh, the Swedish government is just this thing. It's just this one entity. 
and they've said they disagree with Trump, and that's that's the obvious truth. And I, the only way you accept that is if you know nothing about, you know, lit, oh, like it's sad to say, but almost about the world at all, because you don't recognize that they have a government. Who's the person? Are they a left wing person? Like you don't when you only pay attention to this bubble, this Hollywood entertainment leftist bubble, then there is only one opinion that exists in the world and that's the normal thing and anything else that deviates that from that is a crazy person yeah, absolutely crazy speaking um, of crazy is, uh, from npr how to protect yourself this fourth of july from omicron variants and more contagious omicron variants are more contagious even outdoors they're not i mean sorry <laughs> youtube but they're not um there's you can look it up and they did a study in 2020 um that there is less than 0.1% chance of you getting contracting COVID outdoors. Yeah. And remember and they when they, there's less than one point, they, they say there's less than 1%. It's even lower than that. Cause it's, they have to put a number on it. They can't say less than zero. Uh, maybe they could, but <sighs> you can't, there's has not been a single time where it's been recorded outdoors. Not a single time. And uh, remember because when how do you, it came how do you, out, how do you measure that? No, you it's it's nonsense. It's all nonsense. But I, I just this reminds me of when it came out that six feet was completely arbitrary and it barely got yeah. any headlines. Nobody really some talked places about it. had different lengths because yeah. um, in they had two meters, two meters is not six feet. Two meters is greater than six feet. So they just went with whatever they thought because one meter is not far enough. That's like it's pretty tall, like one meter, but it's not. It's not six feet. So they had to just, well, we can't go a meter and a half. <laughs> so um, we just round it up to two. Yeah, just whatever. Right. They'll, they'll eat it up. Outdoors. Mask up if you're in a crowd. Why are you in a crowd? If you're this it, afraid, why are you in a crowd? The mask is not like, and this is YouTube again. I'm sorry, but uh, let's take the risk here, I guess. We can, put, but the mask is not, uh, it's not a medical mask. The person, this woman's wearing a green, probably there's like, N9s and N95s are not green. This is not protecting you. Like this is to only thing it stops is pe physical balls of spit and sweat coming off of your face. That's why they use it in surgical settings. You can look this up as well. I feel like I'm back in 2020 explaining this. Even in surgical settings, the most precise and clean environment, they did not notice a difference for people wearing masks or not wearing masks. They could not find a measurable measurable in a place where you can see a speck of dirt on the ground, they could not find a measurable difference because the mask is actually designed to prevent sweat and spit, like large things of spit that you're visible <laughs> from going in a body or something like that, for example. And then the people might say, mint. well, it's, it, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a junior mint. Um, <laughs> so damn it, Eric. <laughs> so that, uh, and then they say like, well, it's actually spit droplets. Well, of course, all the droplets, droplets, <laughs> droplets are microscopic. You can't see them. If you can't, if, if you can't comprehend that a regular mask is not stopping microscopic things, I don't know what to tell you because it's not, it's not stopping microscopic things. You can smoke through it. You could spit through it. If you tried, you can drink through water through it. Yeah. You can do a lot of things through it. Think about if you're wearing feel... one of those, right? If you're wearing one of those and you start and you go and you go paint a house, you think you're going to smell the paint. You exactly. Think you're going to be able to That's smell. Basically. If you... Yeah. Yeah. And big things that are floating around visible things in the air. And this is the example I use. And I hate to bring up military examples, but it's obvious when they put you in the gas. Uh, I don't want to use the word chamber, but it is <laughs> in the hut, the gas hut to CS gas. You were tear gas. You they're not giving you a paper paper mask or a plastic mask or even an n95 mask and these things have visible it, the gas is visible and it has things floating around in it they make you cover your eyes your mouth and everything else that it touches because it will sting you because it's visible just think about the fact that these are microscopic organisms illnesses airborne viruses they can go into your ears your eyes your nose your mouth and any other orifices if you are actually going to be consistent and protect yourself, you'd have to wear a hazmat suit. We yeah. pull on this big suit. We put a, a hood up over the mask. We tighten it all over the mask. We check to the seal on the mask. And then once the stuff is on you, if you feel it and you put this solution on a sponge and you rub it all over yourself so the gas doesn't burn your skin. 
that's the lengths you have to go to to stop something that's even visible, a visible chemical agent, let alone a microscopic scopic agent going through a piece of blue, you know, yeah. mesh. But if you're at a if you're at a music festival, just do it, bro, because they just want to make sure that they just they just you know they're trying to just you know hold on to it and get more people to comply and obey and just like <laughs> we're it's still like, this far into it. Yeah, but it's because it's well, it's it's obvious to to me and you that it's not about Rona anymore. But this is basically like voter gauging, like who is still going to pay attention to us, who is still going to listen to us. And this is from NPR, which, of course, is taxpayer funded. So this is the government telling you that, like, well, if you if you obey these things, then we know we still have control of you. Like, beware of different kinds of tents. Like, come on, really? (laughs) It's such like theater like you can see this one can i see a photo of your negative test so like everybody's just so honest that like i can walk in there with my my friend who had a recent test you send me a picture of your negative test please that's good enough that's good enough as long as we're asking you know but why are you hosting an event why are you hosting an event if you're afraid of this exactly i go to a restaurant with my girl a couple weekends ago and we're sitting there and this couple comes in god bless them and they're wearing masks why are you forced to go to a restaurant and not sit on the patio even too? I didn't even think about that until now. Are you forced to go to this restaurant? Yes, you want to experience regular life and everything. But if you think that there's this virus floating around, why are you risking it? Why are you doing this? I don't understand it. Why are you going to a baseball game? It it's doesn't insane. like. No, it's insane. And that's the end of the graphic, unfortunately. Yeah. Fleeting encounters. Even if you're running in to grab a cup of coffee on the counter and you're in a haste of this person who's got a huge wingspan, by the way, <laughs> just sw- smacking this coffee off the counter with an open hand because it's a shitty drawing, you should even then wear a mask, which isn't even covering his nose. No, I don't think it is. Maybe that's just the bump at the top of his nose, but still. And now this person's yelling in this person's ear. But they're safe, don't worry, because this person's spit droplets can get in your ear and it's not going to do anything, don't worry. Your mouth is covered. It's not science. Like, remember, it always used to be like, you're anti-science. No, you're the one who's just pretending. You're, you're playing pretend. And yeah. we're in 2022 and you've got me upset with this, Eric. Congratulations. Yeah, well, just if you just say the word science, then it becomes science. And I think... <laughs> Uh, I mean, and you the the very first point you made there is the simplest one, right? It's like, if you're scared of this, why are you out at a festival? Why are you hosting an event? But like I said, this is just them trying to see who will still obey their nonsensical rules, all funded by the American taxpayer to the national public radio. Our next thing is this law. The Supreme uh, judges are taking their toll on Democrats. New York City's done citizen voting law struck down. So they wanted... I forget how many it was, Eric. Maybe this article will be friendly enough to tell us. I think it was around 80,000, 800,000. So they wanted 800,000 people. That is, that's like three cities around, more than three cities around me combined of people voting illegally. New York wanted it to happen. A Staten Island judge said no. I tried to explain to someone the other day about why because the Democrats are in control, right? But then we, I look up the statistics. Trump appointed, uh, appointed more federal and circuit-level judges. Well, not more. He appointed almost as many as Obama did in eight years. So he Trump put four. a lot of... Exactly. So Trump put a lot of his influence out there. And you know, if they're a Trump person, they're supposed to be loyal and believe what he believes in for the most part. Um, so we put in all these judges, and it actually is coming home. The chickens are coming home to roost. I don't think I ever say that. But <laughs> especially in New York, where they try to you know, limit the constitutional effect as best as they can, they get shut down with the um, concealed carry permits, which they're trying to do again. They're trying to prevent it again. Um, they wanted a certain cr- list of criteria. And I forget they're doing it in a different way now. And then also the illegal voting getting shut down too. So there is hope. And up here, where there isn't really as much hope, our judges do not side with the Constitution. They go with the loopholes in our non-Constitution, our Charter of Rights, where it says, well, it's too dangerous, so we don't have to abide by the actual Constitution or Charter of Rights. That's literally what it says. These are subject to change if um, if the government deems yeah. that it's in a time of danger. Which yeah, is, they just which put a little... Great little asterisk there like uh maybe like eh, a british guy a british guy wrote that for sure Mm, but we don't want to give them complete control 
Put the star, put in the asterisk <laughs> that says we can do whatever we please. So, yeah, what do you think about this, Eric? The the judges are kind of slamming down on New York's nonsensicalness. And even w- with abortion, with the gun rights, with this, I know there is something else about the border the other day that sort of went in the other direction. So you can't really say that you hate. There's the also an, Court. E- an EPA ruling that they didn't that the left wouldn't like. Yeah, that's right, too. Yeah. So um, they can say that they hate the Supreme Court, even though they side with them on, on some other things. They won't pay attention to that, though, would they. But um, Kathy Holchel, your girl, was talking about how <laughs> terrible it was. Do you think that there is this concerted effort to, you know, basically ignore that what the Supreme Court is actually d- doing is holding up the Constitution and not just, you know, being bad politicians? Yeah, well, they have. Look, these people obviously have. It's, it's only a one-way street for them. So if, you know, as soon as something goes their way, they're obviously they're going to love it and say, we need to respect, we need to respect these rulings. And then if something doesn't go their way, they just go, they turn up in the streets and say, it's all illegitimate. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to fight this. And like, we're, you know, like, why should we have to listen to these people, blah, blah, blah. And, and sure, that, that might be true. The, you know, there's a lot of, I guess libertarians out there, or uh, maybe anarchists. I, I don't know. They'll they'll you know show the meme like, why does it matter what nine people in robes have to say? Blah blah blah. Okay, so that's <laughs> fine. But but that 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 at least I think is a little bit more honest argument when it comes to like the the democratic establishment left. We know that it's just different when they do it, right? Like they can mm-hmm. riot and protest and it doesn't matter but as soon as somebody shows up at drag queen story hour they get investigated for a hate crime and w- about um you know here they're going to say at least the new- the new yorkers like the probably the transplant you know the williamsburg hipsters are going to say you know they they hate staten island staten island is where all the racists live and and so they're going to hop on that because the judge is in staten island so they're going to say well this staten island is like that's where the trump voters are and blah 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 And it's just um, it's a little bit strange because this has obviously been their plan. Right. Was it um, eight months or a year ago or whatever it might be that all all the headlines were about voting rights and they you know, it's racist to to need I.D. to vote and all that stuff, which is as far as I'm concerned, the precursor to letting illegals vote. What what other reason do you hop out? What do you hop out of the window and say, well, you need to show your paperwork to to get into a restaurant, but to vote, you don't need that at all. You don't need anything. So it was clear to me that their agenda was built on, I guess, buying votes from illegals, people who just weren't paying attention. And they would say, well, this Democratic politician uh, let me stay in New York and gave me free health care and checked my fentanyl and didn't arrest me when I mugged a woman or whatever. So they're trying to buy the votes, and then the Staten Island judge just comes down and says, "No, nah, it's not really going to work." And that is a lot of people, bro—eight hundred thousand people. And mm-hmm. and this also kind of coincides with another rule, or I guess it was a law a couple of years ago where they said it was. <laughs> this is crazy, and maybe you remember this. Um, it was illegal to use the term "illegal alien." So, like, if you were in a fight with somebody, or or, um, you know, this guy, he works at a hot dog stand or he's a doorman or some, you know, just some like regular like New York City job that, you know, like no, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just saying like a regular run of the mill, like security position or something that a guy might have been illegal and and he did something wrong. So the employer says, I'm going to call call the police on you and you're an illegal that they made that illegal. As I understand it, you can fact check me. It's a little bit old. But basically, you were not allowed to say in in a in a derogatory manner, illegal alien like you weren't you weren't able to use it as a threat, completely disregarding the fact that the very first thing this person did was illegal just by showing up or not returning when they were supposed to. So Mm -hmm. it's I mean, as I always say, it's an absolute mess. And I I guess there is a little bit of sanity returning. Um, We did see, uh, of course, another little bit of sanity with the kind of with the swimming thing where they said okay no you know no more leah thomas if you want to be if you want to be a trans swimmer then you got to trans the kid when he's 10 years old or whatever so maybe that maybe that's a bad example the kid you're turning that into a google verb yeah oh yeah out of the dictionary trans him 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't do it. They did it. Um, well, what I wanted to say on this was that people from other countries, and I only am aware of this because of the nature of the industry I'm in, that having a Supreme Court rely on to abide by a piece of paper, whether it be a couple hundred years old or not, and stick to that is something that is invaluable. We don't have that in this country, like I mentioned, that they can ch go change it on a whim, however they feel, if they want to tell you something's dangerous, even if it's not. And all, my other point was that people don't realize how actually diverse the Supreme Court is. They, they always like to say how it's men deciding these things and it's old white men doing all this stuff. There's a Hispanic woman. There's a Hispanic man, at least one. I'm going off based off the last name of the second guy. I'm not sure if he's also Hispanic. Then you got two white guys. You got a black man and you got a black woman now. A black what? So a black woman now. Hmm, not nothing. Tangy Jackson. Uh, a wo woman. I don't know. I'll have to oh, I see. What you, I see what yeah. you're doing. Here. <laughs> what a clever guy you are. <laughs> so they've got all these different voices that represent, which is what they say they want, and it's still not enough. Why? Because it's never enough. If you don't agree with them, then that's when the name calling starts happening. Clarence Thomas is this. Uh, Greg Kavanaugh's <laughs> a rapist. Well, they. I, I just wrote something on this. Clarence Thomas. Um, they tried to say that he uh, harassed a woman in nineteen when they were confirming him in nineteen ninety one. They said they had a woman come out and say that ten years before that, when she was an aide to him, that he sexually harassed her. He would joke about porn and stuff that he watched and he would say all these things and um people thought it was they were in a relationship blah 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 but like this man who's this going to be a supreme court justice of course it's always the same things they try to pull out amy comey barrett they could she was kind of an obama selection so they couldn't really do anything except they tried to call um I think they said that she plagiarized was the bit they tried to do against her, that she plagiarized a part of her biography or something like that. And then, of course, we saw what they did to Kavanaugh. And um, who's the I forget what the other guy's name is. But basically, every time there's a Supreme Court justice being appointed by a Republican. And like we said, we're not Republicans over here. But every time there's a Republican being appointed, something has to come out. Something comes out. out. And maybe that's good that you want to make sure everything's out in the open. But they always have this huge thing. Like everything that happens that ends up coming out is this huge thing. He's a gang rapist or uh, <laughs> Clarence Thomas sexually harassed a girl. And then in, there's another girl who came out in 2016 and said that on the same night, the same night Trump's uh, Entertainment Tonight came, grab him by the Vagine came out. <laughs> she posted on her Facebook that Clarence Thomas grabbed her ass a bunch at a party while she was uh, in law school or something like that. And it's like every single time there's something, it's the most uh, incredible thing. So either the truth has to be that all the people that they appoint to Supreme Justice on the right wing actually has to be, or to the Supreme Court on the right wing, they're terrible people. At the very least, they're bad people who are disqual should be disqualified for their job. Or at the other end of the spectrum, at least some of these are lies. They can't all be, you know, if either they're all code tens and these are the worst people, or they're all at least criminals or bad at their job. Either that has to be true, or at least one or a couple of these out of like the last like six appointees they've tried to smear. But what they do is every single time they act like this is a brand new story and this is the first thing that we've the first time we've ever heard about anything like this and something needs to happen. And keeping in mind that when they tried to do this to Clarence Thomas in 1991, it was similar to Kavanaugh in the sense that they had already investigated the claims and found no wrongdoing or was inconclusive. Yeah. And I wanted to mention before we go that Eric Adams, who's your favorite guy also, um, said he believes that New Yorkers should have a say in their government, which is why I will and will continue to support this important legislation. De Blasio didn't sign it, but um, it's just interesting that you say New Yorkers should be able to have a say. Like, they're illegal immigrants, is what he's talking about. <laughs> His translation is illegal immigrants should be able to have a say in the politics of the city for which they have illegally immigrated to and therefore do not pay federal income tax. They might pay taxes on purchases, but they're not paying income tax and they're not paying into the system that they benefit from through those taxes. And it does the law did not allow non-citizens to vote for any state or federal office. 
Yeah, and that's that's ABC trying to like, you know, soften it up. Like, well, it was just for their city. Like, it wasn't like they were trying to take over. <laughs> they weren't going to vote for president. So, like, just mind your business. It's like, okay, so uh, if I'm in Arizona, can I just fly back and just start voting? I don't need an ID. If eight hundred thousand people are voting, Eric, then what if these eight hundred thousand people voted for some some city ordinance that was just like. Anyone who's not a citizen living in New York should get a hundred thousand dollars. So it's like yeah. the people who are literally are not legally allowed to do things get to decide what the law is. Yes, and I'm anything else yeah. is anything else would be racist. Anything else would be uncivilized. Thanks everybody for watching. Eric Baller at the TatumReport.com. Report and opine on Instagram and subscribe to his YouTube channel and mine and Unauthorized Opinions. Thank you for listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google, and anywhere else you may find this. Like Twitter, where a lot of people find it. But uh, we're noticing growth on Getter, um, and I'm noticing growth on YouTube as well. And All one right. day, Eric, will take over the world. Perfect. And uh, I just wanted to say, yeah, I, I could see uh, your white boy summer shirt in full effect with the pink. Thank you. Pink <laughs> I should have, if they weren't all the way in my car, I would have wore the sunglasses for at least, I need I uh, want to get some of the sunglasses too. Just I don't know. I, I actually they're always not that thought expensive. they were cool. Yeah, they're I think not you that can expensive. Get, like, some, uh, I use them for driving. Uh they're like eighty bucks Canadian, which means it's like twelve dollars for you. Can you, I mean I feel like you could just get some knockoffs off Amazon or something just for the You look, don't but. want knockoffs, Eric, because then you're not cool. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Just pay the fifty dollars that's gonna cost you. I would Take never buy knockoff Amazon. Yeezys. Take it out of your BIPOC retirement fund that you're gift getting. Um, I saw somebody I knew was wearing fake Yeezys. Who was it? I think it was my it was my producer. Produ shit out. Oh, I won't say his name. I won't out his fake <laughs> Yeezys. But he was wearing. I was like, are those Yeezys you're wearing? And he's like, oh, they may or may not be fakes from Chinatown because <laughs> he's dating a, an Asian woman, so he knows all the best places to go for the good knockoffs. You know. Understood. Understood. Um, well, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching and listening. Thanks for taking the time, as they say, as I figure out which button to press. Goodbye. Turn it up, George.